here to All Saints Church in Pontefract, yes, a church, and to our Ascension Day liturgy. I trust you will enjoy this as we begin our service with the hymn, Hail the Day that Sees Him Rise. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for forty days we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb, and his defeat of the power of sin and death. And he appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers.
trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule. And so let us hear the story of his parting from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up into heaven. And after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this commandment. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. And they were looking up intently into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I think I'll say that again. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so see, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heaven. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us offer to him the praise worthy of his name. As we sing. You have raised our human nature 
to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and to serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the church in Ephesus. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. And I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. And that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 47. The response, O oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. O oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. Oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of the trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to Him a psalm of praise. Oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on His holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of the God of Abraham. For the kings of the earth belong to the God, and he is greatly exalted. O oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. Alleluia, alleluia. Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures, and he told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Now, I know it isn't very British, but when was the last time you really got excited about him? At the moment, those of us who might follow things like rugby or football team or any other sort of sport, or what for that matter, don't really have a lot to get excited about. There's nothing going on. Somehow, for me at least, watching a historical match just isn't the same. We already know what happens in the end. But of course, there are many other things to get excited about. Maybe at present it's something as simple as just the prospect of being able to go down the road to the garden centre because you've used up all your lawn dressing and, and run out of compost. And really, if you're a proper gardener anyway, you should be making your own compost at home. Or better still, maybe, there's a wedding in the offing. Not at the moment, but people are still planning. Or a new grandchild on the way. Or a party, but not a big party yet. Or a holiday. Now that's what I'm at least going to get a little bit excited about as soon as I can. But that's not what I want to talk about today. And we're in church, or I am anyway, and you're here in spirit, so I'll count you as being here. We're in church, so any answer to any question in church is supposed to always be Jesus, isn't it? When was the last time you really got excited about anything? And what was it that you got excited about? When was the last time you really got excited about church? No, not about church. Maybe in church. And I hope sometimes church is exciting and the thought of the prospect may be one day of coming back here sooner rather than later and joining in fellowship here in this place will get you excited, but that's not what I'm on about. As I said, the answer, because we're in church, is always Jesus. Now as good Anglicans, of course, we have a double dose of that great British reserve, or at least some of us do. And you would think, especially when reading some of his more sober letters, that St. Paul would be with you in not getting, or at least not showing outwardly, too much emotion and excitement in church. But you would be so wrong. I think that part of the problem is that most of the translations of the Bible that we use were written by theologians and linguists. And so when we read them, they sound a bit formal. And added to that, mostly we hear them read carefully and properly in church in a formal setting, and that color, colors the way that we receive the words. Now, don't get me wrong. Reading to ourselves aloud or in church, listening to it being read, reading the Bible is a serious matter. First of all, we don't usually do it. suggest to you that it's not enough just to come to church and hear it being read, or in this case, over the internet and hear it being read. We should read it, always. And then we should always read it prayerfully. I've made it typographical in this sermon here, I've put playfully. Maybe there's something in that as well. But we should always read it prayerfully and carefully. And ask for the Holy Spirit to open it up to us and to illumine it. Now there's an interesting word. To colour it in for us. That's where the magic should happen. If we're content to read the Bible as a black and white text, we miss so much. But the work of the Spirit is one of illumination of the Scriptures. Not just throwing light upon it, but colouring it in. I want you to think about those wonderful illuminated manuscripts of former times. Extending the gamut of use of language and the colour that's there to use an old colour chemistry and physics phrase from my days at work. And Paul, in his letter to the church in Ephesus, he's excited. In fact, he's quite animated and getting more so as his letter continues. He's heard some good news 
And that's something always to get a bit excited about, isn't it? Good news. And Paul does. He gets excited about it. In fact, Paul says that since he heard this wonderful news, he can't get it out of his head. The faith of the people in that city and surrounding countryside is growing. The love that they have for God's people and for God is growing. So much so that someone had seen fit to tell Paul and let Paul know that this was the case. And so Paul shares their excitement in his letter at all of this that is going on for them. And encourages them in that faith. And then he gives them something else to help them to grow their faith. And his language illustrates his mood. And we would do well to take note of some of it because it might just get us a bit excited as well. Paul begins to tell them more about Jesus and about his resurrection and ascension. And he uses words like glorious father, a glorious inheritance, a revelation of power, mighty strength, heavenly realms. You can sort of hear Paul's voice rising in tone and see his face being animated more and more as he declares to the Ephesians and of course to us today as well as we read it, wonder upon wonder and glory upon glory. And he's got wonderful things to get excited about and wonderful things to get the Ephesians excited about. They're to receive the spirit of wisdom. In a couple of weeks, we will remember the day when the spirit of truth, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of our Saviour, the Holy Spirit, was poured out upon his people. The Ephesians were to receive this spirit. They were to get to know God in Christ better and better. They were to be filled with hope. He gave them excited yet. Paul reminds them that they've been called into riches, not the riches of this world, but the riches in Christ. That they might receive a glorious inheritance. Now, if that's not something excite to get excited about, I don't know what is. And then Paul is in raptures. Because he sort of forgets. I remember very often you've got to think about Paul as he's, as he's writing these letters. He's not sat down at a desk writing the letter. Some poor scribe is trying to keep up with him. And so he goes on. And he goes into raptures over something wonderful. The elevation of Jesus through the resurrection to ascension and enthronement far beyond. Well, beyond everything you might imagine or know here on earth, now or ever. And as the Lord of all things and the head of his church, his body, that's you and that's me, you know. We are in this wonder of wonders too. And he reminds them, little Ephesians or little Pontifractarians, you are a party to all of this. Where can Paul go with all this excess now? Well, there is nowhere else to go, really, because he's brought us right to the feet of him who fills everything in every way. Amen. And so, in the light of all that wonder, let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Who, though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made of himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him up on high and given him the name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so a litany for ascension day. If you have the words in front of me and have downloaded them from our website, please join in. 
Our God goes up with shouts of joy. Our Lord ascends to the sound of trumpets. Sing praises to our God, sing praises. Sing praises, sing praises to our King. The Almighty rides in triumph. The Almighty leads captivity captive. Who shouts for joy? Who blows the trumpet? The host of heaven sing the honour of his name. They praise him with an endless alleluia. Sing praises to our God, sing praises. Sing praises, sing praises to our King. The Lord has brought down death itself. The Lord has wiped away the stain of sin. The Lord has trodden the winepress of suffering. He has paid the price to rescue the lost. Now he returns to his throne of glory. The hour has come to reclaim his crown. Sing praises to our God, sing praises. Sing praises, sing praises to our King. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Life, now reigns in heaven with the Father. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Life, now rules in the congregation of the righteous. Ascended Lord, how can we honour you enough? Ascended Lord, how can we rightly praise the victory you have won? Prepare us for that welcome day when we shall behold you in all your majesty. Prepare us for that welcome day when we shall stand before you and rejoice forever. Sing praises to our God, sing praises. Sing praises, sing praises to our King. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice, because I am going to the Father. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with me. And so let us offer, as we can, his peace to those around. So we gather around his table, the table that he left for us to celebrate around and invites us to come to, until the day that he comes and takes us to be with him. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of the salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with me. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Born of a woman, he came to rescue our human race. Dying for us, he trampled death and conquered sin. By the glory of his resurrection, he opened the way to life eternal. And by his ascension gave us the sure hope that where he is we may be also. Therefore the universe resounds with Easter joy, and with choirs of angels we sing forever to your praise.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he gave you thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of my blood of the new covenant that is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance. Great is the mystery of faith. For Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, and rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so looking for his coming kingdom, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
those with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that, nourished with such spiritual blessings, we may set our hearts in the heavenly places through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. Before our final hymn and blessing, the dismissal we remind us that on that day, 2,000 years ago or thereabouts, the disciples went home, went back to their everyday lives. But that those lives were never again the same. Then the disciples returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. And they were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Christ, our ascended King, pour out upon you the abundance of his gifts, and bring you to reign with him in glory, and the blessing of God the Father, and the love of his only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and the abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with each and every one of you and those that you love and pray for, both this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We finish with... The wonderful hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
as we wait in silence. Make us ready for your coming spirit as we listen to your word. Make us ready for your coming spirit as we worship you in majesty. Make us ready for your coming spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah.